Hi, I'm Tierney. Welcome back to my channel. It is when I am filming this just nearly the very end of June. It's probably going to be like maybe the first week of July when you're seeing this. So a little bit late, but better late than never. This is my mid-year freakout tag. So I'm going to talk about lots of books today, even more than these actually, because I don't have some of them. So let's get right into it, shall we? The first question for the Media Freakout tag is the best book of 2021 so far. I'm actually going to talk about three rather than just one because the real answer, I'm not sure if it counts. So the real, true, in my heart of hearts answer is The Picture of Doreen Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is my favourite book of all time and I reread it this month because I was in a massive reading slump and it fixed my reading slump right up. This book is fantastic. Look at all my tabs. But yeah, this is probably really my favourite book that I've read so far this year, but it is a reread, so I don't really know if it counts. So I'm also gonna say The Colour Purple by Alice Walker because I thought that book was fantastic. And also The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. Both of those books are definitely, definitely favourites of this year. The second question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2021 and I genuinely don't have a book to talk about for that because I have not read any sequels this year. I just don't tend to read series and I haven't picked up a single sequel yet this year so no answer for that one I'm afraid. The third question is a new release that you haven't read yet but you want to read. I'm really awful at keeping up with new releases. I was going to say Know My Name by Chanel Miller, her memoir, but it turns out it came out in 2019. So that's how well I keep up with new releases. So I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> don't have an answer for that one either. The next question is the most anticipated release in the second half of the year. And despite my being terrible at keeping up with new releases, I do actually have an answer for this one. It is The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman, which is the sequel, so it will probably be like the only sequel that I read this year, but it is the sequel to The Thursday Murder Club, which I read a few months ago and absolutely adored. It's just such a fun, comforting, like classic murder mystery type story with such wonderful, lovable characters. I cannot wait to dive back into that fictional world. I'm so excited for that book to come out. So that's probably the only release I'm even really keeping up with. I think it comes out in September and I'm super excited for it to come out. Question five is the biggest disappointment of the year, which is an easy answer. It's The Dinner by Herman Koch. I have yet to take this to a charity shop. <laughs> the reason this is like the biggest disappointment compared to other books that I've read this year and haven't enjoyed that much is because of how excited I was about this read and how much I thought I was going to love it and I just didn't. So there's that. The biggest surprise is gonna have to be Daisy Jones and the Six. So I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo like at the end of last year I think and I did really really enjoy it but for some reason I just didn't think I was gonna enjoy Daisy Jones and the Six. I was like oh I don't know it just doesn't sound like my thing you know? But again, for kind of the same reason I reread Dorian Gray, because I was in such a reading slump this month, I picked this up from the library just thinking like, oh, you know, it's Taylor Jenkins Reads, it's just gonna be a fun drama. So I checked it out. I finished it yesterday and I loved it so, so much. I actually loved this even more than The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I think I gave that a four star. I gave this five stars. I thought this book was so fantastic. Um, I'm obviously going to talk super in depth about it in my June wrap up, so hold for that. But this, this book, this book. <laughs> Favourite new author. So it says debut or new to you. I don't know if I've really read any debut authors apart from Richard Osman, who wrote The Thursday Murder Club. So I think I'm going to have to go for either Andrea Levy, who Although I read Small Island last year and absolutely loved it, it's only after having read Every Light in the House Burning and Fruit of the Lemon this year that she's really kind of 
cemented herself as one of my new favourite authors or Emma Donoghue. Last year I read Room but I really didn't feel any particular way about Room. I thought it was very meh. But then this year I read Akin, The Wonder and The Pull of the Stars and I gave them all four to five stars. I thought they were fantastic. So she's actually a new favourite author as well. Question number eight is newest fictional crush and I find this a really strange question. Don't really have an answer for it. I don't tend to get like crushes on fictional characters from books. I don't know, that's just a me thing. Um, I also don't really tend to read books where the characters are very likeable or nice or the stories are very happy. So maybe that's why as well. <laughs> Question number nine is newest favourite character. Karen from Daisy Jones and the Six. <laughs> One, she's a badass. Two, there's this section where she's talking about like why she doesn't want children. Um, I don't think I've ever resonated with a character so much in my life. Karen from Daisy Jones and the Six is just, wow, you know? Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. I have a few for this. So we have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Absolutely sobbed at this one. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Absolutely sold my heart out at this one as well. And then had a little cry at some parts of Daisy Jones and the Six as well. I do actually think more books have made me cry than just these three, but I can't pinpoint any. So these three, if you're looking for a good cry. Can we have a book that made you happy? I'm gonna go for Akin with Emma Donoghue. The relationship between the main character, whose name escapes me at this present moment, but the elderly man and Michael, the teenager, and how their relationship develops and becomes so close by the end of the book. That's just that is just heartwarming stuff, you know? Question number 12 is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or been given? My answer for this is actually a book that arrived at my house yesterday and it is this absolutely stunning vintage Russian classics edition of War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. She's thick. I've been watching so many videos from Emmy's channel and the series I particularly loved was her series documenting her reading War and Peace and it really made me want to read War and Peace. So I was kind of looking at different editions and various things. I mentioned it to someone at work, probably in the kitchen, um, and an editor happened to be there and she was like, oh my god, I just finished War and Peace. It was so good. You need to read it. So I went to the bookshop on my lunch break and they only had the vintage, I don't know what like edition it technically is, but I thought it was disgusting. I really didn't like the way the font was done or any of that. And then they also had the Penguin Black Classics version of it and it had this awful oil painting style picture on it and I thought that was disgusting as well and then I remembered that these editions are a thing and I went on Amazon and someone was selling this beautiful beautiful secondhand copy for five pounds so I got this for five pounds and it's in such good condition and it's so beautiful it's probably not just the most beautiful book I've bought this year I think it's probably the most beautiful book I've ever owned <laughs> I can't wait to read it one day. And now we come on to the final question. It's because I didn't have answers for a lot of them, I guess. But these are books that you need to read by the end of the year. And I've gone for three books that I already have on my shelves. So like books that I'm really excited about have on my shelves and really need to read. And actually like the reason I haven't read them yet is kind of because I'm so excited about them. So these are books I'm so convinced that I'm going to love. That I keep almost waiting for like the perfect time to read them. There's no such thing, but I'm a mood reader, what can you do? And those books are My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is probably my most anticipated read ever. I think I'm absolutely going to adore this book. But I keep putting off absolutely 100% need to get to this at some point before the end of the year. This would probably have been my answer for like prettiest book had I not bought this this week. Um, 
because I think the cover for this book is pure art. The other one is The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett. I'm so late to the party on this book and again it is because I just know I'm gonna absolutely adore it and I'm waiting for the right time to read it but this 100% need to read this. I have the mothers too, but like this is the one where I'm like, you're so late. You're so late to this book. <laughs> but I know I'm gonna love it when I do get around to it. And the third and final one and the final book I'm gonna talk about today is Another Country by James Baldwin. Uh, my friend got me this for Christmas, so it's been on my shelf for ages now. I read Giovanni's Room last year. It was one of my favorite books of last year if not my favorite book of last year it was so fantastic james baldwin's writing is just pure poetry and again i'm putting this off just because i'm waiting for the right time i'm waiting for the right time to curl up with some james baldwin and i know that this is going to be one where i really just want to annotate underline this is what i'm going to want to take my time with so who knows when I'll get to this, but hopefully before the end of the year. So yes, that was the last question. This was my mid-year freak out tag. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in another video again soon.